Hello, today we are here having Guys Night Part 2 for the review of The Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a game that we've been trying to get to the table for a while. Uh, unfortunately, Birdman had to come off contagiously like and disappear for quite a while. Yeah. And I know this is one he really wanted to get to the table, so we're getting it to the table. Unfortunately, we lost Dragon Mother for tonight because she's out picking up the children. So while she's doing that, we got a game in and I uh, wanted to give our thoughts on it. Uh, this is a exploration game. If you're a fan of Indiana Jones and who isn't really. In right, that. yeah, I mean, come on. If you like jungle exploration and finding lost temples and all kinds of things like that, this game is thematically for you. Um, there, This is a deck builder and a... Um, point salad game, worker placement. worker placement is the primary, uh, I guess, mechanic of it. Um, it has lots and lots of bits and lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, there, the component quality, uh, this, this is above what I would consider a standard CGA, CGE, I'm sorry, check games quality. We've got card stock is always pretty good in, in check games and these are no exception the cards have a nice texture and feel to them i know we're going to shuffle it a lot from looking at the rules so i went ahead and sleeved them uh but uh they're really a good stock you don't necessarily have to do that um but you probably will want to because you shuffle at least five times because there's five rounds so yeah it is a long during your game yes you're yeah. going to shuffle your cards a lot not to mention preparation before the game yeah um the cardboard Pretty good thickness. It's mm -hmm. actually above standard what you would find in most games. Uh, Probably the best part is the plastic bits. Yeah, the uh, I love these arrowheads. These are my the arrowheads are really cool. They are three dimensional and they actually feel like an arrowhead rock yeah. rock arrowhead you might find. I mean, obviously you wouldn't find it in a blue. Although I wish you could. I don't know, maybe because these uh, that color They're is really amazingly cool. cool. That's one of my favorite colors of blue. And I equally like the tablets because it's got a little higher glyphic song. Yeah. So that's so really we're going to summon you a close up of these bits. Ooh. Hey, you don't get to summon. That's I my ability. I wanted to try. All right. Next no, time. No, 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 it's all right. no. I don't want to do it. Okay. Good. Because that's my thing. <laughs> so the. And then uh, there's jewels too. So yes. These little red jewels. Were well, I just summoned nice. them. No, you didn't. You just summoned the arrows. Oh, no, I said I'm, I'm summoning the bits. All right. So the hieroglyphics have a neat little print. So if you can tell us what this translates to, we'd love to know. Probably. Randy's a jerk, but that, I, I mean, bet that's probably true. <laughs> Go ahead and put it into our uh, comments if you can translate the, the, the close-up yeah, of what those... That, that would be really cool. We'd love to know. And the only... I, I wouldn't even call it a negative, but they did cardboard versions of the coin and the compasses. So it would have been kind of cool if they did all the components of the same level yeah. as the tablets and the arrowheads and the jewels, but yeah. not a big deal. But it just would have been kind of cool. Well, we, we can substitute little tiny metal compasses. We sure could. Yeah, if you yeah that would them. work. That'd be yeah. great. So, uh, yeah, the, the component quality, I think, is probably about an eight, is my assessment. So it's, your biggest criticism was the stickers. The stickers, yeah. The the, the, the one drawback, I hate stickers in a game. And, and so the, your, the, your markers, is you got a little notebook in your color and a magnifying glass. And you have to and apply so you have the to stickers. Put stickers on. Yeah, and that, I just always take off a bit for the stickers on a game because I just absolutely hate that because then you have to worry about lining them up and redo them like 10 times and then they lose There's their like stickiness. There's like one company that's really bad about that and he really hates it. I do. <laughs> Takes too much trouble. All right. Uh, so yeah, that, that's my one grief is the stickers. But all, apart from that, that, I think it's all well done. And I agree. I think, I think it's an eight. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. The board is huge, by the way. It takes yeah. up the entire table. We got an image of that, which I'll there's look. really two pieces. Summon the board? No, I do not. I, okay, I am not a summoner. I'm a summoner. Ooh. Yeah. So you can see the board. It takes up like nine tenths of the table. Going it's pretty big. With wise. And this is, I mean, it's not a huge table, but, but, but at least the space is used. Mm -hmm. It's not like a bunch of empty space where yeah. sometimes you get a lot of big boards and there's just a lot of, stuff that's not really utilized maybe some nice artwork but yeah not really utilized but this it's all used so it, it's a lot of landscape but it's yeah. it's good landscape so so yeah what's your assessment on yeah i, I agree with the name okay so i agree with that all right so theme uh you know this obviously it, like i said it's an I adventure think... theme 
it feels adventure-y. I mean, totally. I mean, yeah. I think the theme fits very well, and yeah. all the elements of the game fit the theme very well, too. Yeah. So that's always one of my things, is do, does the theme push the mechanic, or does the mechanic push the theme? And in this case, it does. Mm -hmm. So, I, I again, I, I, I think this is at least an 8 for, th for theme. It's really neat. Yeah, I'm going to give this one a 9. I, I, I think the theme's appealing to a lot of gamers, mm -hmm. and it also fits well with the, the, the gameplay of it. And at its heart, this is really a point salad game. It doesn't have to be this theme, but I can't think of a theme that would fit it better, particularly since it's integrating the scoring track. Now, you have mentioned before that Dune Imperium, which Dune Imperium coincidentally was, released the same week as this it came out. I don't know if it's it very close yeah. to release, but... What's odd is that the mechanics are very similar. I play. Uh, there'll be a solo review that we'll post uh, that I did with Dune Appearing as well as hopefully we'll get a multiplayer game in. But game mechanics, it's very similar, specifically on the cards where they're dual use, where you use it for movement or you do it for action. That's the main thing. It's very similar. All right. Well, well I'll, have, I'll take your word on it for now. We've got it. We haven't tried it yet, uh, but... It, it, that would be a different theme, obviously, laid on to the same mechanics, right. if it's true. But, you know, to compare the two at this point, when they both come out at the same time... <laughs> it's very strange. It's it's kind of an odd comparison, because normally you would compare a game to an established game right. that's been out for a while, not one that, that releases the same week. Um, but as, uh, it felt fresh to me. It didn't mm -hmm. feel like a stale... You know, I think that both did, because they came out at the same time, it did feel fresh for both of them because it was so unique. So, I, I, I thematic and gameplay wise are really cool. But what did you think of the rule so, book? Oh, okay. On to the rules then. All right. So, the rule book is it's pretty detailed. It's we got about we got a lot of hokey story, but I like the story. Part of yeah, it. there's a little bit of fun <laughs> on day one, day two, day three. So, if you like the flavor text, there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of that. Yeah, it's kind of humorous. It, it was a straightforward read. It didn't feel like things were out of sequence when we read mm -hmm. through it. There's a lot of images. Some of them felt a little excessive that you like. It just assumed or you didn't have to know or it. I, I, I'm badly explaining this. You didn't. Um, you really didn't need the image that they gave you right. to detail what it said. In a lot of cases, it's like, OK, that's you're playing to my simple mind. And, and we went through about maybe half the cards, maybe a little less than half, but there was only really one clarification where uh, we had a little bit of question of yes. uh, one of the mechanics where it allows you to move to an already, uh, move your die. What Generally, once you move to a spot, it's done. But the, the, an artifact allows you to move to another spot. One said for free, one didn't. So we didn't know yeah. for sure. There is a lot of iconography in this. Yeah. and. There is a uh, appendix that has cards where they have questions. They have some reminders as far as don't forget these rules because I guess they're commonly forgotten. They have some frequently asked questions, but not a lot. But, the but big, they do have the, cheat sheets. They have a cheat sheet, and it has most of the iconography mm -hmm. you're going to see in the game on it. But Which is nice. Yeah, so I mean, this has really been helpful. It's really flimsy, though. That was yeah. my one complained about it. It's, it should be a nice cardboard stock to match. but Or a nice laminate or something. Yeah, I mean, this is really flimsy. It's going to bend easy. Um, but, yeah, as far as the rules go, I, I'm going to give this one a 9 because I think they went above and beyond to try to make it simple to learn. Mm -hmm. It's it's not that once you get playing the game, the, the concepts of it are pretty simple. Yeah, other than that one clarification, yeah. we didn't pull the book Yeah, out. There, there was one card that we looked up on Board Game Geek because mm -hmm. it wasn't even the, the rules real well. It turns out it was. It was there. It was just that it wasn't the card. It was the, the key word on it right. that was really explained in the book. So, yeah, it was really, it's that pretty it. well done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think a nine is fair for these rules. It's they're pretty. They you know they they they've done a nice job with these rules. Um, and I, I, to be fair, Czech Games usually does do a nice job with their rules. Right. I mean, they're the ones that do Galaxy Trucker, which mm -hmm. is one I, one of my favorite rule books to ever read because it had a lot of humor in it. Um, so yeah, I think they get they get kudos for their rule book generation capabilities. Um, as far as do we want to talk about the makers, or do we want to go into gameplay? Oh, we can. Um, please forgive me, because these are some I love this difficult part. names to pronounce. Please, please read them. Um, so the designers are uh, 
either they don't have a first name or a last name. So They're that famous. It, it's Elwin is designer one, and I assume Min, M-I-N, is designer number two. That's all, that's all we got. Now, the artist, this is Could tough. be one guy, and so his real name is an ampersand. Maybe. Yeah, the, this is either Polish or somewhere Eastern Europe, somewhere, because these are some tough names. So, again, forgive me, but I'm going to try it. Unless so, you live in Poland or somewhere. Jen Kus is number one. Um, and Page Herdene, Herdina or something. Uh, Jacob Pulitzer, that one's not too bad. Uh, Frantizic uh, Sedlak and Milan Bavron. That's what I'm going to go with. Mm. Okay. There you go. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. But it, it, it did get a good score of 8.2 on Board Game Geek. So, um, and we already told you the mechanics. So. All right, so let's go into gameplay. So in this game, as we mentioned, you're doing exploration of this lost ruins of Arnak. We, we got to chuckle as we read the rules because it said, <laughs> we checked, what was it, check? According to our charts, the land was uncharted. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> the charts say that it's uncharted. We thought that was funny. Quite funny. So uh, you're on this uncharted but charted island, right. and you are trying to discover the secret lost ruins of Arnak that apparently everybody's looking for, so... Well, there's multiple um, sets of ruins that you're trying to find, so... So, as you're going through, you're basically... You have two workers that you can assign as explorers to different locations on the map. Uh, there's some basic ones that you already found that I assume are coastal. Yeah, these are called tents, so... So, they're, they're locations right along the coast that you've already discovered. And they give you your and basic resources. And they give resources. you basic resources, along with your cards will also give you some basic mm -hmm. resources. So, you're limited to one main action per round, but you can take any number of free actions, which are indicated by lightning bolts right. on the cards or actions. And you, you can do them in any order you want mm -hmm. on your turn. So uh, you, you, your goal is to try to get as many points as you can, which can come from exploring areas and defeating the monsters, because every time you explore a new area, you uncover a guardian of that area that you must and ultimately you, defeat. And you also get the artifact. So when you yeah. first go to an undiscovered area, you get an artifact. And if it's face up, you get either a resource or a little ability you can do, and then you flip it, and they're all worth three points. Yeah, and some of the harder to reach ones give you two of those, but right. one of them is only face up, the other one is face down, so you get six victory points in essence, but you only get the, get the benefit one. one time. And then once you do that, then you will put a location. So if it's in the middle, you get a level one location. If it's at the top row, you get a level two location. But then you also reveal a monster, and there's a bunch of different really cool looking monsters that you put on it, and it's got a little cost. So you discard the cost and you beat the monster and it's worth five points no matter what. If you but, fail to beat the monster while you're sitting on the location, mm -hmm. you're going to get a fear card. Ooh. These are negative victory points at the end of the game. So you want to try to minimize these cards. Right. And there's there's a few ways to get rid of them, but there's not a lot. Most of the time you're going to get stuck with these. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to minimize how many of those you get. So if you're at a location where there's a monster, try to be... Be Try and beat the monster and be beating it before you and, leave. And your monster also usually gives you a one-time benefit that you can do as well. So that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. But um, other than defeating the monsters and going through, you're trying to discover these locations. You also have this temple track off to the side, and it's got different resource costs to go up. And you got the two pieces, like we said, you got the notebook and the uh, magnifying glass. And really, the only rule is that the magnifying glass basically has to go first because you're yeah. just dis you're discovering the area with that yes so, and then the notebook you're recording right so you always have to make sure the you know, magnifying glass advances fur furthest and ultimately when you get to the top scoring where the most points are the magnifying glass is the only one that can reach that right and then off to the far uh, right hand it shows you the victory points and the benefit for the magnifying glass getting there and then the notebook getting there and the first ones are really really crucial because it gives you um basically assistance yes. that you can uh, get into your uh, board that gives you additional resources or abilities. Yeah, that you, that you tap the them once per round and can trigger them, but there's ways to reactivate them. Right. Um, and there's two levels to those. They start on silver, and you can upgrade them to gold mm -hmm. as you move up the track. So if you upgrade them and you've already tapped them, they re-ready. So it's right. another way to get, a, to get to use them again. 
And then if you reach the top of the track, once you've maxed out, you can still get points because there's some bonus tokens at the top that you can spend resources to get those tokens. And they did a neat little thing where they made it a pyramid. Right. So the cheap ones are at the bottom and each one only costs a couple resources. But then if you go to the second tier of the, you, it's worth more victory points. It goes from two to six. And you, but you have to pay two of the resource sections below. So it's, it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> uh, and then if you get to the very top one, they're worth 11. All three. But you got to pay all three of the costs below. So that's a really neat mechanic. It is really neat. And you were able to do that twice. Uh, yeah, I, was I wasn't able to times. get it. Yeah, I, but, but you didn't get to the 11. No, I never got to the 11. So um, I wasn't able to get to the top of the track at all. I kind of ran out of resources. So all I had was a bunch of uh, compasses, which allowed me to buy additional parts, which probably helped me win the game. Yeah. So. And, uh, you know, it was a really close game. Really close out. game. And even though we had totally different paths that we got to those points. Yeah, I was mostly monster killing. And yeah. uh, then at the end, I got a few extra cards. You were mostly trying to go up the temple track. And you defeated one, maybe two monsters. I had one. One monster. Yeah, so. yeah. And I gave you one as a bonus for yeah, you. And I appreciate that. That probably made yeah. the game. Uh, and then, then there's also points on the cards you acquire during the deck yep. from the deck building. That you buy. And the deck building is crucial to the game because really is. you start out with a very simplistic deck of four cards and two fear. And the fear is basically a wasted card other than it lets you travel to the basic tent right. location. So it's not completely useless like some deck yeah. builders yeah, it's where you have a, a completely useless card just to... Um, add, you know, that frustrating where you're drawing a card that doesn't do any good. It does something. Yeah. It's just not very useful, but it gives you negative victory points too. But what's interesting on the deck building is if you acquire tools, which is early than the majority of the cards, they go to the bottom of your deck. So yes, early in the game, you'll draw them, but as your deck thickens out, mm -hmm. any new cards you're going to get may not come up for one or two rounds. And that's the items. That's but you the also items. get artifacts. And then the artifacts start out, there's only one of them, and then it, as you progress in the game, you get more and more of those and less and less of the tools, right. which is a really cool idea, too. But what's unique about the artifacts is when you get it, it comes into play immediately, you get the benefit for free, but then when you go to your next round and you draw the card to play, you have to pay a tablet. Yes. To activate that artifact. So it, it's really cool how they mm -hmm. integrated the decks and the, the deck building into this. It's not a standard deck building right. mechanism. And, um, you know, so when you shuffle your deck each round, the ones that you played, they go on the bottom of the deck as right. well, below, but they go so below. So you will the eventually you draw got. the new, new cards that you buy. Yes. You're guaranteed to get them, but you might not get them a bunch. But you got right. Except for maybe the last round, right. obviously. But. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a cool idea the way they've done it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I all overall, with all of the different things going on, this is right up my alley as far as I love the theme, mm -hmm. I love the uh, mechanics of this game, and how it's a point salad, a game. Of, so this one is definitely right up my alley. I really can't fault it. I can't either. Uh, there's so many good things about this game it, it's just fun to play yeah and, and that's the most important part is the fun factor and it's it, it's there in space yes and we played it two player and it plays up to four and i you know generally i can imagine this being a lot it, better in gener with right, three or four. generally with games when you dome down to two players i always have a grievance about playing yeah. them because they're usually not as good and all it does is it blocks one of the spaces for you for someone else to be able to go there yeah and, and that's so, it that's really the only downside mm -hmm. of playing a two-player version of this. I, I'm giving this a nine. I agree, totally. I, I think it's a very solid nine. It, it's it got everything I like in a game. Um, you know, if, if it, I, I'm not really sure it doesn't deserve a 10. I mean, it's just, it's, I hate giving 10s, and we've given, I've given them too many lately, so I'm giving this a 9. I'm giving it a 10. You're going to give it a 10? I'm going to give it a 10, because it's just, like you, it's got everything that I like, in a board game, I love deck building. I love worker placement. That's my two favorite uh, things in a game that you can have mechanic-wise. It's got both. It does both really well. It's got tension. Tension in the fact that, like a good worker placement, if I really want to go somewhere, generally Randy or Miranda will go there before me and block me. And so it's got that. Uh, uh, but it's not game ending yeah. if you can't go there but it just makes it a lot easier if you can yeah and so it's just really cool and i, I the only i think i'm gonna stick with the nine just because of the fact that the the deck 
the way that my deck fell mm -hmm. each time, I kept getting hosed by that. And yeah, but that's like any deck builder, though. But is you could get that's an element with... of luck in the game. I mean, True. Yeah, you know, that is it's something that I don't I, and I don't know how you would overcome in this, but it's it is a, a frustration when. You, you get the right cards, but you get them you in just the wrong did, right. order coming up to you. I mean, that's that, how I usually lose. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I got that awesome axe right away. Right. Never got to pair it until the very end of the game, so I never got it to pair along with any the of cards the, you the wanted cards you wanted to trash or the fear ones out of your deck. So those things can happen to you in this game, and you know. So even though I might have gotten some better, but that's to me part action. of that tension that it adds yeah, to. So, yeah, and I like that. And, and then, plus, it gives you an excuse. So, if you lose a game, well, it's because the card screwed me over. So, that's why it definitely wasn't his game plan. No, absolutely not. So, yeah, so, yeah I, I think a nine is a fair score. A 10, yeah, I can understand your 10, mm -hmm. too. Uh, you know, it's definitely a very good game. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I would, if you have not heard of this or seen this, I would check it out. Uh, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you are if you are a fan of this, I would go ahead and just get it because you're not going to go if, wrong. If you're a fan of work replacement or a fan of uh, deck building, get the game. Yeah. Because it does both like, well. you know, adventure themes. Yeah. I mean, which is, everything about this is right up my alley. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love I love the back. I actually like the monster oh, yeah. on the back of this better than the yeah, monsters. The, 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 I like the, the snake, snake looks really out of the, cool. the yeah, out of the dark. And... Yeah, I mean, the spider there is pretty neat, too. I mean, they're all cool. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. the reddish-orange tiger, I could live without. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, in general, I mean, all of this is really neat. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I, I'm very, very happy with this purchase. Yeah, we'll definitely be playing this one again. Yeah, and this was a blind buy for me, too, because I did not have any expectation of getting it. I think it. I told you about it. Yeah, but I didn't order it. I just went to get my other there. games, and the guy, you know, the guy that runs our friendly local game store was like, hey, did you buy your copy of this? I'm selling out of it. So oh, yeah, because it's super like, hot. Yeah. So he had a ding and dip copy at the store, and I got it for a discounted price as a result, and I wasn't... You know, it wasn't really badly dinged. The box is a little dented in, which is but that, yeah. But but your pieces are fine. Yeah, I mean, it's totally playable, and uh, yeah, I I really enjoy this. I'm looking forward to playing it again. So there you go. So I wonder if we can get Dragon Mother to play when she gets here. I think so. Yeah. So so that's our review of the Lost, Lost Ruins, Ruins of Arnak. Arnak. So uh, if you like what you saw, you know, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Like button. Give us your comments, your hit feedback. Hit the notification bell. Yep. All that good stuff. Yeah. yeah it, and any comments that you have, please feel free to, to comment down below. And that's it for me. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like we should have worn, like, some kind of pith helmets or something <laughs> while we played this. Matching shirts. Matching shirts? Yeah. <laughs> why because explorers always wear matching that's right shirts. <laughs> or at least matching hats right? yeah yeah at least we could have <laughs> so if, if my son hadn't left my indiana jones hat out in the rain i could have worn that that would have been great mm -hmm. so so all right well see you next time have a good night all right bye, bye.